Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top-Down Shooter. This video is about setting up the framework for the character's abilities and effects, including ability removal. However, we're going to start with a oversight from the previous video. Set input mode for input mode game and UI means that the mouse is able to be used for UI and controlling the game. However, the default, which is being used because we're just calling this this way, means that the mouse cursor disappears when you hold down left or right mouse button. So to fix that, we're going to take the struct, create a variable from it. We're going to use that to call set hide cursor during capture and set that to false and then pass that along. So as I talked about in the previous video, the character will have primary, secondary, movement, and utility abilities, and then weapon abilities will be determined by the weapon that they have equipped. So to apply these four abilities, we're going to set up some default functionality. When a character is created and possessed, those abilities will be assigned. So first I'm going to include gameplay ability spec.h. Going to be adding these three functions, initialize abilities, initialize effects, and clear given abilities. Two arrays here, default abilities and default effects, will be exposed through the editor. And they're both just arrays, so you can just add any number of abilities or effects to them. The given, given abilities array here is not exposed to the editor, since there's no U property for it. And this will just track which abilities were given. And then we can iterate through that array to clear them later on. The gameplay ability spec header was needed for this structure here. First, we're going to add calls to initialize effects in on rep player state and both initialize abilities and initialize effects in possessed by. The initialize abilities function will first make sure that this is the server. Check to see if the ability system component is valid. And then we will iterate through the default abilities. And we're going to call give ability on ability system component. We're setting along a gameplay ability spec with the ability, the level, and the input ID. So in the previous video where I mentioned that the give ability call in blueprints requires the ability input ID sent or set directly, this is how you're setting it in C++. We're then just adding the spec handle to the given abilities array so that it can be used down in clear of given abilities, which again is server only. Check to make sure the ability system component is valid. Then you iterate through the given abilities array and just call ability system component clear ability with the spec handle to remove it. Similarly, the initialize effects function will also check to see that the ability system component is valid. And then we are going to use the ability system component to make an effect context. Then iterate through the default effects, call ability system components make outgoing effect for that effect, sending along the effect context, and that gives us a Gameplay effect spec handle. As long as that is valid, we're calling the ability system components apply gameplay effect spec to self and sending along the spec handles data, which would be the effect. So with that, we need to, it's not understanding this here, the ability, get ability input ID because we need to include our TDS gameplay ability. Next, we can compile that. OK, 
hit F5 to run it. Somehow the content browser got popped out. All right, so if we go back into the third person character blueprint, we're calling the give ability here. We're sending the primary ability as the input ID, uh, and it's for the GT or GA test ability. So just like in the previous video, we run this, I'm hitting Q, and you can see that the test ability just set up to just print out the third person character's display name. That's what's being printed. If I'm hitting E, which is the secondary ability, nothing happens. So I'm going to remove this. If I run this, hit Q and E, nothing is happening. Now in this test ability, I actually set up the ability input ID as secondary ability, which is E. So when I go into the third person character, I do a search for default, our default abilities this year, add an entry for GA test ability, compile that, run it. Now I hit Q, nothing's happening. I hit E and it's sending out that, that print message. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and you would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you would like to support this channel or just want to download the project files, you can do so through my Patreon linked below.